Okay, in this video, we're going to go ahead and just talk about sine and cosine graphs. And we're going to do this particular problem here to kind of help us uh, learn this. It's actually pretty involved, and for you students taking trigonometry or pre-calculus, um, <laughs> I'm sure you can relate to me that these doing these graphs uh, do take time. So if you're a little frustrated with the amount of time it takes to uh, complete one of these graphs accurately, um, you're not alone, and it's actually, you know, uh, the problems are that. Uh, you know, involved, if you will. So uh, this particular problem, we're not going to do any horizontal phase shifts. Um, I'll talk about them uh, a little bit, but I'm just going to explain this. But this I, will definitely be helpful to you if you're studying sine and cosine graphs. So before we get into this particular um, graph here, um, graphing this uh, equation, let's just get some general uh, things down here about sine and cosine graphs. Okay, so uh, nomenclature. So here I have a kind of a graph that we use to graph sine and cosine graphs. So a basic sine and cosine graph go to, and kind of mark it here, 2 pi. Okay. Now 2 pi, you should know this as being the period of the of the actual cycle or one wavelength. Okay, if you will. So this is what we call a period. So this is going to basically cover one uh, graph. So let me just kind of show you here. Kind of sketch that's not be exactly perfect so I'm kind of rough handed in here. But the sine graph is going to basically look something like this. Okay. And it's not exactly perfect. Let me see if I can draw it a little bit better. Okay, it's kind of like that. And by the way, too, your sketches aren't going to have to um, be 100 percent accurate. Even if you're using graph paper, you can, you know, um, you know, kind of sketch them, you know, as long as you get the basic nature down. But this is the general form of the sine graph, okay? Kind of goes up and down. Now here, the top, okay, is gonna be one, and this bottom down here is gonna be negative one. So this distance here to here is called the amplitude. So you can see the wave is going, starts from up here, or its height, if you will, goes from here to down here. This is the amplitude, okay? This here, this distance, once again, is the period. Now, this is a standard uh, sine wave. Okay. Now, what you're going to be asked, what, you, what you're going to be asked to do when you graph these things is, you're going to, these sine waves or cosine grids are going to get stretched out. They're going to have either longer periods or they're going to kind of be compressed. Shorter periods are going to be higher and going to be lower. We can do all kinds of things with this. Okay. We can also move them up, um, up and down, and we can even flip them upside down. So, like I said. A lot kind of going on, but here I just want to kind of kind of get you going um, with this. I'll probably make some additional videos as well. Okay, so cosine. Let me actually do some things here. Okay, I'm actually going to break this up in force. I should have done that with the sine, but let me just do this here. I'll break this up in force, and I'm going to do the sine again. Okay, because the force. I'll get to cosine here in a second. Are going to help us? Okay. So let's just look at 2 pi, and this is the period, okay? And this continues on, by the way. This just continues on and on and on, okay? This is what we call this in trigonometry periodic functions that go on and on and on and on around the unit circle, if you will. So we're only looking at one cycle, one wavelength of the sine uh, graph. So here, I uh, was remiss uh, previously, this is one period 2 pi, but for the basic sine graph, it's in the middle. We kind of have to split this in force. So this would be pi, and this would be pi over 2, and this would be 3 pi over 2. Now, this is the radians. Let me draw this up here. Okay, and this is 1 and negative 1 for amplitude. So what does this mean? Well, and here's 0. Um, well, this means is the value of sine, okay, the sine of 0 is 1. Now, pi over 2 as degrees, I'm going to speak in degrees here, is what? That you should know that as 90 degrees, right? Pi is 180 degrees, 3 pi over 2 is 270 degrees, and this is 360 degrees. And then the cycle just continues. So at 90 degrees, the sine of 90 degrees is going to be 1. And you can go into your calculator, by the way, and do that. Just make sure it's in degree mode or radian mode. But we don't use degrees when we're graphing um, sine or cosine functions or trig functions. Okay, but I wanted to show, illustrate this so you can go into your calculator and see kind of what's going on, all right? All right, let me just get rid of this. Okay, like I said, even for myself when I'm teaching this, I don't want to miss too many details um, about this, but the 
basic thing where we're talking about the period and amplitude is for the sine graph, and I'll do cosine here in a second, is that you want to take your period, okay, so the period once again is this distance, and then we're going to be chopping it up in force, and then you would draw this general uh, sine graph. Now, let's talk about cosine now, okay? So we'll keep the same period. Cosine now is going to start from 1, okay, and it's going to go down, cross through, bounce at pi, a negative 1, and then come back up and do this kind of deal. So that's the general cosine graph, and then obviously it's going to continue on uh, like so, okay? So when you're doing sine and cosine graphs, you have to know the general, uh, uh, what the general graph looks like first before you can even do, any, do anything um, else in terms of a more complicated problem, right? So amplitude and then period, period being a wavelength. Now remember, when we, when we get these periods, you're going to have to chop them up in force, okay? So here's cosine at 1, okay? So the cosine of 0 is going to be 1. The cosine of 90 or pi over 2 is going to be 0, okay? So the cosine of pi or 180 degree will be negative 1 and then so forth. Okay. And for those of you who are not taking trig, just kind of learning this as a lesson the first time, probably may not be getting it because it is quite involved. So this video is kind of more intended to those people who have already been who already studying this, so hopefully you can kind of um, keep up with me. Okay. Here we go. So now I'm going to give you, um, there's several different ways um, to write this equation I want to give you to, uh, give you here. This, this I particularly like, but I'm going to go ahead and give it to you over here. It's y equals a sine bx minus c, and I'll put plus d here, all right? So this is, but by the way, I have sine here. This could be cosine as well, all right? So this is just a general equation. So the coefficient or the number in front of the sine, this here is going to be your amplitude, okay? So this number, so here you can see in this particular graph that we're going to be doing, our amplitude is going to be 3, okay? So that means our height this way is going to be 3, and our height this way is going to be 3, okay? So total, uh, total height, if it's say 6, okay? Now this part here, right, this part here has to do with our... Um, the period, okay, of the graph and the horizontal uh, shifts, or we call phase shifts. I'm not going to get into this too much, but I will um, in this particular problem because we're not going to do it. But let me just state this. The B, okay, we're going to be using this to determine the period of the graph. So the period, okay, the period, which is the wavelength, is going to be 2 pi over B, okay? Now, this other stuff here, bx minus c, if you had something in here, let's say it was sine 2x minus 5, something like that, well, you would use the entire bx minus c to determine your uh, phase shift, how much, it would how much the wave would shift right or left, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and give that to you here, uh, just in case this is helping. I'm not going to demonstrate it in this problem, but um, let's go ahead and take a look at it. So bx minus c, if you take that bx minus c, set it equal to zero, okay? This right here will give you the left endpoint, okay? Let me just write it this way. Kind of just do a rough sketch again, all right? So this would be like the left endpoint, okay? So if you solve this, this will give you the left endpoint or how much it would shift. Then this one over here, the right endpoint, can be found by solving this, bx minus c equals 2 pi, okay? So if you solve these two, you can identify where your left and right um, uh, endpoints are, okay? Now, of course, that's going to span across whatever period you have. So I'm just using 2 pi here. So just kind of real rough. And let me write this here. This would be the right endpoint and left endpoint. All right, I'm going to kind of give you a quick pause here to kind of uh, write this down. But last but not least, actually, let me just say one more thing here. The D, okay, the D is how much vertical translation is going to have. This is going to be how much the wave is going to be moved up or down, all right? So now go ahead. <laughs> I'll give you a quick moment as I catch my breath to you and write this down if you're taking notes. I, you know, as, a, as a math teacher, I've always found this format to be pretty useful. There's different ways, like I said, you can describe this, but this is pretty good.
Okay, so if you have that down, I'm going to erase this and we'll kind of get to work on this problem. Okay. All right. So what I like to do, I'm going to erase all this here. There's different ways to do these problems, by the way. Okay, however you're comfortable, because it's kind of like a, almost like a, you know, it's a, like an art project, <laughs> to use that kind of term. There's a lot going on. You have to sketch and you got to move. You certainly have to use pencil, okay, for sure. All right, so what I like to do is always like to start with any vertical or um, uh, vertical translations, okay? So here, this too tells me that this sine graph, and, I, and just the general idea of the sine graph, is going to be moved up two. Okay, so this axis or like x axis, we want to draw a new one, but we want to be from up from um, up to. Okay, now I'm going to use a different color to kind of illustrate this. All right, we're going to think of this as our new x axis, if you will. Kind of straighten this out. Okay, so we just moved this up to. So everything here, this is going to be kind of like the the center of our sine wave, okay? So that's the first thing. Now, the next thing you can do is you can just determine the amplitude. I kind of like doing amplitude next, all right? So the amplitude is going to be this number. That's gonna be three. So that means this graph is gonna have a height of three. I'm gonna erase these numbers, okay? And certainly if you're using graph paper, that's really good. Okay, so let's go ahead and just notch three. I'll just kind of use every two units. Here's one, one, two, three. Okay, so now I'll use this. This will be one, two, three. Okay, so you want to mark that three, negative three. All right now, if you have a ruler um, or a pencil, sometimes you want you can just kind of just lightly kind of, you know, maybe mark that. Like let's kind of do it this way. And everyone kind of has a different maybe style of doing this. Um, I would say for you students out there, always kind of do it the way your teacher's doing it, more or less, because then they'll, they'll kind of, you know, recognize that when they're green your, your work. Okay, so we have our vertical translation, which is going to be kind of splitting this road here, and now we have our amplitude. So our wave is going to be bouncing within this channel, if you will. Okay, so we've done this, and we've done this. So now let's get to this okay so if you recall the coefficient for the x is going to, um, to help determine what the period okay which is going to be the actual wavelength is going to be of this so the period of call is going to be equal to 2 pi over b in this case b is 2 so that's 2 pi over 2 so that's pi okay so just kind of use kind of some rough um, distance here just to kind of help so shows up better in the video but let's say this is pi right here okay for our purposes okay so this our one our one sine wave is going to fit it's going to start here okay and it can do something like this this business okay but now we want to kind of split this in half and i'm going to kind of just eyeball it okay let's call this pi over two all right, so that'll be pi over 2. And then we split the pi over 2 again right here and right here. You, well, you're going to have to go and figure it out, right? So this would be pi over 4. Okay, now to get to this marker, okay, how do you do that? Well, these are pi, pi over 4 increments. So you would just go pi over 2 plus another pi over 4, right? So this would be what? That would be 2 pi over 4 plus another pi over 4, 3 pi over 4. There you go, just like that, okay? By the way, um, just to kind of a reminder out there, this video is going to be appropriate for those of you taking, like, say, pre-calculus, college algebra, something like that. So yeah, you should already have some pretty good mathematics behind you. So hopefully nothing here is uh, too challenging. Okay, so that's the period, right? So now we know the period is pi, and we're going to be drawing the general sign uh, graph, right? So the general sine wave looks something like that. Now we just kind of have to make it kind of like fit here in our picture. So it's going to start, let me use a different color. It's going to start here. It's going to max out on the first quarter. Okay. And it's going to go through this one. Then it's going to kind of 
um, hit its bottom at the amplitude down here on that third quarter and then come back up again, okay? So let's see if I could draw this carefully. Something like that, okay, let's say, all right? And if I was your teacher and you gave me something like so, that uh, would be totally acceptable. All right, so there you go. So this would be, okay, uh, y equals 3 sine 2x plus 2. So let's just do a quick review, okay? So remember, this, your x-axis here for here is going to be translated up 2. Okay, that's what we did. That's the way I kind of like it. It kind of splits the graph in half. Then I like to kind of create my channel. So I went to um, the amplitude. Okay, so I know the amplitude is going to be between 3 and negative 3. So now I kind of have a kind of a road. I'm just kind of, here's a road, you know, and here's the white lines between a road. Because now once you have that, then you, it's easier to kind of draw your waves. Okay. Most, most teachers may do it that way. If your teacher does it differently or you like doing it differently, that's fine. Okay, as long as you're creating um, accurate graphs. Now the next thing you're going to do is take and find that period, that wavelength. Okay, what one period is. And then you're going to chop it up in force, okay? And then lastly, you need to know what the general uh, trig function is. Here it's sine, so you're going to be doing this, okay? Well, here's something like that, actually. And if it was cosine, it would be something like that, right? And then, by the way, too, let's just say, and I don't want to get too much more in here because there's more um, challenging examples, certainly, because if we put a negative sign in here, this is going to flip upside down. We can have a phase shift. This can be shifted to the right. And for you out there doing, like, say, cosecant or secant graphs, I mean, that's that's even <laughs> that's even a lot more fun. But I don't I don't. That's for another video here. Um, if you can get if you're just starting out and you can get this down, okay, and you can master the concepts here, then you'll be okay for the rest of these graphs, right? Of course, tangent. For those who are out there studying uh, trig, uh, is going to be different than this. So sine and cosine graphs, hope this uh, helps you out. By the way, this is my uh, website, tabletclass.com. You can go to the link um, in the description. Um, and, uh, of course, you know, take a, take a, it's, a, it's a math learning website. Um, take a free trial there. Come check it out. And if you like this video, it helps you out. Please give it a thumbs up. And uh, keep working hard. Trig is, you know, it's a cool subject, but there's definitely a lot of detail and and uh, you're definitely not alone if you're struggling with this on the cosine graphs. Hang in there. Just take take your time with these graphs and uh, master them one by one, and then you'll, you'll do fine. Okay, thanks.